Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I am so blessed and honored to be your host this week. My name is Jeremy Pearsons. Now, listen to me. We have a week of broadcast ahead of us that you do not want to miss. Let's pray or get right into the Word of God today. Father, we worship you today with this broadcast, Lord. We bring this before you and we honor you with it, Father. I'm asking today that as we get into your Word, as we come boldly before your Word, I'm asking you that you would grace us and grant us eyes that see Jesus, ears that hear His voice, the voice of our Good Shepherd, and hearts that understand who we are in Jesus and who Jesus uh, is in us. We worship you and we praise you today in Jesus name. Amen. Now listen to me. You and I are in for it because today on this broadcast and all week long, we are blessed and honored to have Pastor Joseph Prince all the way from Singapore right here on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Welcome, oh, sir. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a blessing. And thank Brother Copeland and Sister Gloria for Absol this honor. Absolutely. Um, I, I just got to speak with my grandfather for a few minutes, not, you know, just a few days ago. Told him you were in town and I said, I, I've never asked to do broadcast <laughs> or never asked to host yeah. anybody, but I, I felt like the Lord was in this. And I just said, mm. Pastor Joseph's here. I know he loves you. I know that he loves your ministry. And you guys, I, I, I wanted our uh, viewers and our partners to know that you guys have been partners together for yes. a long time now. Yes. And uh, this has been a ministry I know that's been a blessing to you, and I know that your ministry mm -hmm. has been a blessing to them. So mm -hmm. he said, go for it. Okay, let's go for let's it. Let's go for <laughs> it. So all this week on this broadcast, we're going to get into the Word together. Uh, and those of you who don't know, uh, maybe you've been hiding under a rock somewhere for the last several years, but Pastor Joseph uh, pastors New Creation Church in Singapore. Uh, this outstanding, growing, thriving church. Uh, and I, I wanted you to tell us a little bit about the church. And then too, we've got some pictures of the new building that the Lord has just blessed you guys yes. with. And, and let us know what's going on there. Well, last Christmas, uh, we moved into our new building. Uh, it took us about five years to build that building. It's called The Star. And uh, we work together with uh, a retail site. Uh, so there's shopping on the lower floors, but we're on the upper floor. And we have the whole auditorium. Mm. As you can see on the screen, this is our building. Uh, the Star Pack, Star, Star Performing Arts um, uh, Convention Hall for acts that come through Singapore. So we can lease out as well wow. during the weekdays and make money off the world. It's a beautiful place, yeah. <laughs> Let's look at some of these pictures. I wanted them to see. Uh, go ahead and scroll through those, guys. I want you to see. What, what are we looking at here? I guess this is still the outside of the building. And yes, this is the outside a, of the building. I think people look at this and think, is, is this yeah. an actual place? Yeah, or? it's an actual place. <laughs> it's from the future. It is on location. It's this beautiful. is by night. Wow. All right. And, and, and this, this is, is the, the, the auditorium itself. Praise Jesus. Okay. Look That's at that That's my place. congregation. This is a, our Christmas celebration. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I miss home already. I know you do. <laughs> well, we are very blessed to have you today, sir. I know as we tape these broadcasts, you guys have been in the States for the last month. One month, yeah. A month. And uh, I know you've had a fruitful time here. Yes. And you're probably ready to get home and see your beautiful yes. wife and your two and my, beautiful kids. My one and a half year old, he's, yeah. uh, he's picking up words that uh, I missed when I was here. And there's like a growth spurt. You know yeah. what it's like, you know, yeah. Yeah, at this age. And uh, I, I'm, I'm waiting, raring to go home, man. Well, almost, but you're family. not home. Yet. Last burst of fire. Let's do right it here. right here, Pastor. Uh, I, I've, I do want to say this before we get into the word. I know you get a lot of testimonies from a lot of people. Uh, I was reading your latest book, The Power of Right Believing, and there's so many testimonies, one right after another. But uh, I've never really had the opportunity to share with you or to say publicly my personal testimony. Uh, of how the Lord has impacted m my life, my wife and I, Sarah, our family, our home, our ministry, mm -hmm. through what He's done through you. And it's, um, it's something that has really shaped the course of our ministry. In 2009, I was getting ready to preach. My dad was traveling and he asked me to preach on a Sunday and I prepared a message and I sat back and looked at it and thought, well, that's boring. And I knew if it bored me to prepare it, then it was going to bore the people mm -hmm. <laughs> that had to hear it. And... Um, just in, in a time of preparation that day, I heard this come up in my heart, just preach Jesus. Beautiful. I didn't even really know what that meant. I thought, okay, mm -hmm. well, that sounds mm -hmm. great. Well, what, what do I say what, about this or about that? And he said, mm -hmm. just preach Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was alarmed at how ill-prepared I was for that. Mm -hmm. And, but the Lord, you know, He's gracious and He's merciful and He helped me with that. And what I thought was a message 
I realized was my wife and I, Sarah and I, we realized it was our ministry. And we found ourselves in Colossians chapter one, where he said, Him we preach. Amen. And that's what we uh, set out to do. And it was just a couple of months after that. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I was familiar with you, but it wasn't really listening much. And we came across you on television and that same thing rose up on the inside. I said, that's it. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Just preach Jesus. And I asked the Lord, well, what about, what about preaching healing? Mm -hmm. He said, preach Jesus and watch what happens. Amen. What about preaching prosperity? He said, preach Jesus mm -hmm. and watch what happens. So mm -hmm. can you imagine what we're going to talk about on this broadcast this week? Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Will you get us into the Word, sir? Yes. Let's do um, it. You know, I, I think that one of the best places to start off in the Word of God is Romans chapter 5 on, on the power of right believing. Uh, when we come to Romans 5, we find there, I mean, Romans 5 is precious. Um, it has so many truths that we are still digesting and feeding on. Sure. I think probably uh, even our lifetime here on earth, we're not able to finish off everything that's in Romans chapter 5. If you look at Romans chapter 5, verse 19, it says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Okay? Now, we see here that sinners are sinners not because they sin. Mm. They are sinners because of one man's disobedience. Adam's sin made them sinners. Mm. Therefore, they sin because they are sinners. All right? Now, also by one man's obedience, and there'll be the last Adam, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Okay? By his obedience, many will be made righteous. Now, the thing is this. The essence of the warfare is here. The devil wants us to focus on our righteousness or the lack of it. Okay? He wants us to focus on, are you righteous enough? Are you obedient enough? Are you holy enough? And even when you, you attempt to be holy, he says that it's not enough. Right. You know, you study the scriptures, you will say, so and so studies five chapters. You only study two chapters. Right. You study five chapters, somebody else studies 10 chapters. You pray one hour, somebody else prays three hours. He always point to you, even when you do right, he will point to you it's not enough. When you do wrong, of course, he tells you it's wrong. Right. Okay, so the devil is always keeping you self-occupied. But in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, verse 4 and 5, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing. And watch this, bringing to captivity every thought, every thought. to the obedience of Christ. And not our obedience, but the obedience of Christ. So the right. essence of the warfare is to have our thoughts focus on the obedience of Christ. Right, the devil wants it focused on you. But the Lord wants our, our focus to be on one man's obedience, that man's obedience that made us righteous mm -hmm. at the cross. All right, he obeyed God at the cross. That's that one act that made us righteous. Now, the thing is this, the amazing thing in the body of Christ, what I see is that um, we preach to the sinner, okay? Now, there's no good or righteous thing that you can do to undo the fact that you're a sinner. Okay? Isn't that what we preach? Sure. We tell people, once you're a sinner, okay, unless you're born again, all right, you can do good, you can give to charity or whatever you do, it cannot undo the fact you're a sinner. But now that Christ, His obedience has made us righteous, we can undo our righteousness in one day. <laughs> all right? In other words, uh, you can be righteous in the morning and be unrighteous in the evening and then get yourself re-righteous before night falls, you know, and, and something right. is wrong. Yeah. And we are not even talking about much more yet. We're not even talking about much more yet. We're talking about Jesus, the second Adam and the first Adam on, on the same ground, mm -hmm. on, equal found, on equal footing. Something is wrong. We are not giving pr a value to the work of the second Adam, yeah. where we exalt the work of the first Adam. What he did was so powerful, we cannot undo the fact that we are a sinner. But what Christ did, we can undo it. Hmm. So I think that it all must start here to realize that obe uh, righteousness, you know, the Bible talks about obedience. I believe in obedience, but Paul talks about obedience in chapter 1 of Romans. Mm -hmm. And the last chapter of Romans, he talks about obedience like this, obedience to the faith. To the faith, yeah. It is right believing. It's not this legalistic obedience. In fact, when you have right believing, for example, you believe that it is that one man's obedience that made you righteous, okay? That is right believing. Mm -hmm. And right believing will always produce right living. Yeah. 
Just preaching right living from the pulpit does not necessarily Which we're produce. Good at. Yes. Yeah. And and I've been I, I I grew up in a church where I got saved when I was I was very young. Uh, my aunt brought me to Christ and and ever since I was saved, I hear sermons, a lot of sermons. In fact, I can remember hearing a sermon about the finished work. It's all about what you need to do, right. all right? It's about right living. But I can see that in, in the pews, there's not much right living. <laughs> sure. and, but people are sincere. I really come from a perspective where I believe, uh, Jeremy, that the body of Christ is not looking for a way to sin. Mm -hmm. They are looking for a way out of sin. That's right. Yeah. I don't look at them negatively. And I think it's, it's time for us to also realize that, like when Jesus saw the multitudes, all right, in, in, in the Gospels, the Bible says, when Jesus saw the multitude, He was moved with compassion because they were scattered mm -hmm. and they were fainting yeah. as sheep without a shepherd. Whereas when we look at a multitude, what do we see? They are scattered because they lack, they lack discipline. Mm -hmm. They are fainting because uh, they are just disobedient. You know what I'm saying? Is that how we look at the multitude? Jesus didn't look at them that way. He saw them as sheep without a shepherd. And then the Bible says, and He began to teach them. Yeah many things. Coming out of compassion for them rather yes. than anything else. And, and feed them, don't beat them, Yeah, you know. So that's where I, I come from, from yeah. that perspective of one man's obedience. Yeah, and I hear you say this, uh, and this has been a major theme throughout your ministry, and especially in this, this uh, new book that you've written, The Power of Right Believing, and that is that this desire that we have, and it's the right desire, it's the right desire. To, to live lives that Sincere, yeah. bring glory to God, Amen. that are that are separate, which is the definition of the word holiness, just right. separated. Right. But what it comes down to is where do you get the power to do that? Exactly. Because if you do what we've been doing for so long, which was mm -hmm. lean on the our own strength to do it, right. we've been frustrated. That's right. So what what the Lord is having you minister, and I want you to say it again and really elaborate it on it, is right believing produces right living. Amen. If we look at uh, Galatians chapter 5, we see the fruit of the Spirit. All right, in Galatians chapter 5, we see uh, Paul speaking by, teaching by the Spirit, all right, elucidating on, 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 on the gifts, of, I mean, the fruit of the Spirit. All right, you find the list here in Galatians chapter 5, okay? All right, we have the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, all right, in verse 22, mm -hmm. all right, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Notice it's called the fruit of the Spirit, okay? The verses before that in verse 19, now the works, it's not called the fruit of the flesh, it's mm -hmm. called the works of the flesh. And what is works compared to fruit? Works is a result of effort. Mm -hmm. Fruit is a result of life. Wow. Okay, so... For the first four chapters of Galatians, Paul talked about law and grace, law and grace, law and grace, law and grace. And then in chapter 5, he talks about, now if you are under grace, the fruit will be love, joy, peace. Even self-control, temperance is a fruit. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. You know? But if you are under law, the works of the flesh is adultery, party spirit, bitterness, unforgiveness, witchcraft, all these are the works of the flesh. Um, I like to illustrate like this. If you look at Israel, you know, when they came out of Egypt on the night of the Passover, they were laden with gold, yeah. right? But they had no temptation. They, they had no desire to build a golden calf. Before the Red Sea, they were not tempted. Through the Red Sea, and on the other side, they were not tempted. All the way to the foot of Mount Sinai, they were not tempted until they said, the works come in, yeah. all right? Well-meaning, like you said, Jeremy, sincere, the most, all that God said, but they didn't realize it was a statement of pride. Right. All that God has said to us, we will do. And it sounds... It sounds good, it sounds, sounds noble. Great. But in the Hebrew, it's, it literally says, kol asher dibir adonai na'aseh. Na'aseh is an emphatic, we can do it. They have, they've not even heard the Ten Commandments. Yeah. But they told God, we can do it. And the moment they said they can do it, okay, God changed His tone. Wow. God said to them, Moses, tell them don't come near. Now, God never had that tone. All of a sudden, there's distance. You see, from, from Egypt, God was with them to the Red Sea and all that, in a pillar of cloud by day, in a pillar of fire by night. But all of a sudden, God changed His tone. Why? Man has presumed on his own righteousness. Wow. And God brought... Israel out, not because they were good, but because He was good. 
It was not because they were faithful, it's because He is faithful. It was based on the covenant of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, which is an unconditional covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay, but at the foot of Mount Sinai, in essence, when they said those words, all the Lord says, we can do it, they were actually exchanging covenants. It was almost like, God, don't, don't bless us, don't assess us anymore based on your goodness, but our goodness. Yeah. No longer on your faithfulness, but on our faithfulness. We can do it. And the moment, the moment they did that, God changed His stone. And the next chapter, God gave them the Ten Commandments. Okay, what's the result? You see a golden calf. Yeah. They had the gold all the time. I mean, Egypt gave them the back pay <laughs> yeah. of all the years of slavery plus interest, all right? But notice they never used that gold in this manner. Yeah. But the moment they, they put themselves under law, the strength of sin is the law. Yeah. First Corinthians 15, 56. The moment they put themselves under law, they broke the very first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Something that had there was a golden calf. never been a thought. Yes. Never been a temptation, never been a, <laughs> even logical to them. That's All right. of a sudden, you're saying when they, when they, you're talking about the power of right believing, well, right. this would be wrong believing. That's right. I can do that. I can do that. And like a kid would say it, I can do that without anybody helping me, mm. which is funny and cute when it's a little kid, but yes. not so much when it's me and you telling That's the right. Lord, I can do this. When so, when so obviously we can't. Yes. But something that had never been a temptation to them all of a sudden. Yeah. And I venture to say this uh, along those lines. Uh, I think that there are believers who never committed some sins that they have committed when they were, a sin when they were sinners. Hmm. But after they came to church, all right, all of a sudden some th temptations became really strong. And I think they got to check their believing. You know, we have, we have, uh, one of the ways you, you know you have wrong believing, okay, is when you, you have a toxic emotion, okay, like fear, guilt. You can't tell you have a wrong believing. You might even think that everything is okay, you believe right, but whenever you have emotions of fear, guilt, own up to it. Mm -hmm. There's a wrong believing somewhere because why are you fearful? There is a wrong thinking. Why is there wrong thinking? There is a wrong believing. Okay. And many a times the wrong believing is because of wrong hearing. Yeah. In going through this book and listening to uh, what the Lord's saying through you, um, you, ha you help identify um, things that we need to see the right way, seeing the way God sees, and then seeing what He doesn't see. Yeah. And I, as these broadcasts continue through the week, mm -hmm. I really want us to get into that. But um, one of the foundation scriptures for that is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, that talks about not being conformed to this world, but being right. transformed. Yes. Of course, conformed just simply means taking on an outward appearance that's mm -hmm. not reflective of what's going on inside. Sure. Mm -hmm. But transformation is letting the inside come out. Mm -hmm. um, and he says to do that by the renewing of our mind. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. The renovation of it, mm -hmm. which would mean you take out things that don't belong and you put things in that do. Excellent. That's right. yeah. Help us identify some of those things. What are, you talked about some of those indicators, fear, Guilt, fear, guilt, condemnation, condemnation uh, let's, anxiety, let's, depression. Let's do some renovation. Let's pull some stuff out right now before we put some stuff in that belongs there. Help us identify some of these things that don't belong. Yeah, uh, for as I mentioned those things and you mentioned very eloquently just now all those things that we need to be. You see, uh, this can being conformed to the world is not your, your dressing or your, the length of your hair or your makeup, how thick it is. I mean, do you think makeup, having makeup is wrong for a lady? I think uh, if you, your face needs makeup, go for it. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, well, how much makeup do you think a lady needs, you know, depending on her face, <laughs> yeah. you, know? <laughs> you know? Let's you know. make no rules yeah, let, or laws. Yeah, so, so the world is not that. The world is the pride, the lust mm -hmm. of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. And notice what the, what the Word of God says about the world, be not conformed to the world. It says, it says that love not the world, nor the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father, mm -hmm. not the love for, for the Father. Right, right. The love of the Father is not in him. Wow. And most people think that when people, you know, they are, con they are conformed to the world is because they don't love God enough. But what God is saying, you know, if you read, read it right, it's love of the Father is not in him. He doesn't know how much he's loved. Yeah. No one has been preaching to him. No one has been telling him how much he's loved. Now, we all preach the love of God, but I think we have not, plumb into the depths of the length, the breadth, the height. Yeah. And our sermons is always like a mixture. Yeah, God loves you, but. but. God loves you, but. Imagine doing that to your wife. You know, it's easy to love Sarah, but imagine doing that to anybody else, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's like there's never 
a, sec a sense of security in that relationship. Sure. Okay? So when, if we give security to our people, I believe they will not love the world. Yeah. That's what I feel like needs to come out, not just in these broadcasts, but now in the world, is that it's, you are so deeply, madly, passionately loved by the Father. Amen. And it sounds so simple, and it is so simple. Yes. It's beautifully simple. Yes. Uh, but that's when fear gets driven out. Right. That's what I want to happen uh, in these broadcasts as we continue this week. Going to get into the Word of God, but there's one thing I want you to walk away with more than anything else, and that is this. You are loved by your Heavenly Father. You are loved Amen. by the Lord Jesus. And that's what I want us to really begin to dive into because that's going to rip out some of those ways of thinking that don't yes. belong. Amen. Um, what would you say, we have just a moment left on this broadcast, what would you say that would sort of get us into where we're going from here. We're, we're taking out things that don't belong, putting things in. We want to see the way God sees. How would you wrap this up for today? I think we're going to talk about, uh, you know, many things during this week about how God is not angry with you and that, yeah. that is not being emphasized. And the sense of God's love, for example, is tied up with the fact that there's a lot of wrong believing in so many areas, you know. And I find that uh, we, we say we are word people, but then when these words are being expressed, even grace itself, it's amazing how we, we are actually, like my brother Jerry Savelle said it very well, we are favorite word. Mm, we need yeah. to be open this coming week yeah. to all these new aspects of uh, learning. You know, I'm still a, a, a learner, you know, and, and so are you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's learn as much as we can about the grace of God because the new covenant is not about us. It's all about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Amen. And I'm so glad for that. If it was about us, this thing would have been over a long over time a ago. Long time ago. <laughs> Listen, it's not about you. It's not about what you've done or haven't done. It's about Jesus, what He's done, and do you believe what He's done? Praise the Lord. We're out of time on this Amen. broadcast today, but don't go anywhere. I'll be back in just a moment. Partnership is the anointing of increase. Just like in John 6, where the little boy's lunch was received, blessed, and distributed through the hands of Jesus and his disciples to feed more than 5,000 people, so it is when your gift is placed in ministry hands. God's way is for seed to come into the ministry, for the ministry to receive it, bless it, and distribute it, then for it to go out, multiplied in greater numbers than when it came in. That's the anointing of increase. We get the benefits of it because we're part of the ministry, because we get the anointing that's, that's on that ministry hat. It's flowing in our lives. The anointing that is on the men and women in the five-fold ministry offices can be transferred to any believer through partnership. You're not putting enough faith pressure on it, you hear me? You need to put pressure on that partnership. Not pressure on me, pressure on the partnership, pressure on the Word. Amen! I'm a partner in this ministry, and I believe for every anointing that's on Kenneth and Gloria. The purpose of the anointing of increase through partnership is to accomplish something that neither the partner nor the ministry could ever do alone. What you believe to be true can and will impact the way you live your life. Wrong thoughts produce wrong actions. Right believing produces right living. How do we know what is right to believe? We discover that in God's Word, and the Power of Right Believing package can help. With Pastor Joseph Prince's latest book, The Power of Right Believing, you'll learn seven practical yet powerful ways to finding freedom. When you know you're loved and forgiven, you have confidence to live whole and complete. Your identity can be anchored in Christ, causing you to live stress-free in His rest. The Bible says the Holy Spirit transforms us as we be whole, not as we strive, as we be whole, he transforms us from glory to glory. Kenneth Copeland helps you discover the truly compelling power of God's mercy, as well as the depths of His love and compassion in this book, Mercy, The Divine Rescue of the Human Race. Be transformed in your belief system by the power of His love. Believe right and live free. Order the Power of Right Believing package for only $24 and save over 20%. Joseph Prince's book, The Power of Right Believing, and Kenneth Copeland's book, Mercy, will help you discover the compelling power of God's love and mercy for you. Be free from every addiction and fear and begin living a life in His peace and joy today. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. For an additional 10% off, order your package online.
I'm so excited to make these two books uh, available to you. Pastor Joseph Prince's latest book, The Power of Right Believing. And here there are seven keys to freedom from fear, guilt, and addiction. Now, all of these things are you, are, there are things that you can begin to apply to your everyday life. And you're going to learn how it's believing right that produces right living. And then along with that, we want you to get a hold of Brother Copeland's book called Mercy, the Divine Rescue of the Human Race. This, these two things go right along with each other because mercy is the motivating force behind God's plan of redemption. And you and I need to begin to take our place as children of the living God. And these two Bible teachers, two of my favorite, I know many of you have been blessed by them as well. It's an excellent teaching that's going to change your life. Get this package into your life today. Hey, listen, my grandparents, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, are coming to Branson, Missouri for the Branson Victory Campaign, February 27th through March 1st, and that's at Faith Life Church there in Branson. And of course, this is Pastor Keith and Phyllis Moore's church, always an outstanding meeting. Just come and get totally immersed in the Word of God, build your faith, get refreshed on the inside. And as always, for more information about this meeting and other meetings, you can go to kcm.org. Now, I want to uh, invite you to join me and Pastor Joseph Prince again on tomorrow's broadcast. We're going to be learning about the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. You do not want to miss this. Thanks so much for joining us today. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you, God loves you and we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. You can also view the webcasts online at your convenience or download them as video or audio files. Continue to grow in God's Word and build your faith with this week's product offer. These word-based teachings will help you live in victory. Order your copy today. Receive the great grace God is abounding toward you and live in the blessing. Tomorrow on The Believer's Voice of Victory. There are times you wake up in the morning and you won't feel righteous. You feel yeah. like some goose, you know, some, <laughs> you know, you feel unclean. Sometimes you wake up feeling unclean. You might have some bad, you know, dreams or whatever, but that's a time to confess by faith. I am the righteousness of Amen. God in Christ.